Hey everybody. So I can see that part one of this series created some major waves across the Manosphere. Many Rolo fans were concerned, and some even accused me of creating drama. Let me address that, since this accusation seems to get leveled at everybody who calls out unethical conduct. Let me put this to bed once and for all. If you watched part one of this series, it's clear that I'm calling out a betrayer who is attempting to create drama, not creating drama myself. This betrayer, Rolo Tomasi, I verifiably demonstrated, secretly maintained a long-standing, secret, backdoor partnership with a feminist reporter who works for a news outlet that publishes articles promoting the hatred of healthy masculine men. This reporter herself even admits to having a standing relationship with Rolo Tomasi. I provided screenshots of emails and messages to that effect. Fun fact, when it's the truth, it's not defamation, slander, or libel. If Rolo wants to test me, let him try to sue me in court and let everybody watch me crucify him. You see, what's funny is that not a single detractor who attacked me for my video ever mentioned Rolo's backdoor feminist dealings. It's like they're so blue-pilled, they're afraid to even address it. By itself, Rolo's backdoor alliance with this New York Times feminist reporter is a betrayal to masculine men around the world. Today, far too many people are indoctrinated to be sheep, to be lambs led to the slaughter. If you look at some of the comments in my first video, you can see it in the tone and the content of the detractors. It's like one of the messages from the Matrix. Blue-pilled people are so comfortable living their lie, they cannot handle the truth. It hurts too much. They will even fight and die to protect their comfortable lie, just so they don't have to face the truth or any kind of verifiable facts for what they truly are. A long time ago, it used to be common knowledge that all evil people needed to do to succeed is for good men to stand by and do nothing. Today, that common wisdom seems to be all but forgotten among everybody, from boomers to Gen Z. So to the people that are upset because I called out Tomasi's betrayal and I exposed his secret alliance with a feminist New York Times reporter, I have the following questions. When the original Americans were unfairly discriminated against, should our forefathers have just shut up and taken it? You know, bend over and just go with it? Or were they right to fight against the unethical conduct they were receiving? As every American should know, our forefathers stood against unethical conduct and fought to create the United States and our Constitution, which gives us not only our civil rights, but our entire way of life. Our country is the longest running, most stable government in the modern world. When Hitler, Stalin, and Chairman Mao collectively murdered hundreds of millions of innocent people, should we have just shut up and accepted it? When illegal aliens, sponsored by corrupt left-wing bigots, victimize American families, should we just go with it? You know, let them sexually assault our mothers, our sisters, wives, and daughters? I mean, no one wants to be accused of creating drama, right? Well, what about the men who had women cheat on them? Should they just take it? You know, sit in the corner while your woman gets railed by her bull? Or maybe pay for his Uber back to his house once he's done with her? You know, buy him dinner and thank him for giving her an orgasm while you watched? I mean, if you're lucky, maybe you can eat their freshly baked cream pie for dessert, especially if you're the type of guy who can't handle conflict. Maybe this is the meal for you. Or maybe, just maybe, and you know, I know I'm going out on a limb here, but maybe you man the fuck up and you hold everybody accountable who disrespects or tries to victimize you and those you care about. But here's a reality check. Anyone, and I mean anyone, who whines when others take out the trash by falsely painting them as drama queens, what's really going on is that these detractors are admitting that the truth hurts. And their pain? It's unbearable. So remember that the next time you read a comment that accuses me or anyone else of creating drama when in actuality, all we're doing is just taking out the trash. 
Also, be especially suspect of any comment that is extremely negative but refuses to address any of the issues contained in my videos on this or any other subject. This is because these commenters are often sock puppets attempting to derail the message with ad homs and logical fallacies in hopes of changing the conversation to avoid any real discussion about the damning, verifiable facts I've raised. Finally, and this is important, whether the commenter is falsely accusing me of drama or just making personal attacks while avoiding any credible criticism of the issues, this is blue pill behavior. Remember, red-pilled men and women address the truth, regardless of how painful it is. Blue pillars and purple pill power bottoms who cosplay as red pillars will do everything they can to avoid any real discussion of the verifiable facts, at all costs. Now, with that out of the way, it's time to continue to pull back the curtain and reveal some more of the verifiable facts surrounding Rolo Tomasi. Not only did Rolo maintain a backdoor secret alliance with a feminist New York Times reporter, but as you're about to find out, Rolo tried to take over the Red Man group and is actively trying to destroy the 21 convention. This is the Red Man Group LLC operating agreement. When Anthony set up the Red Man Group, he set it up as a business, as an LLC. And the partners originally in that LLC were Anthony Johnson, Richard Cooper, and Rolo Tomasi. Now, Rolo has actually signed his real name here, but I'm not going to dox him because I don't dox people. So there you go. Uh, and they signed this agreement on January 23rd, 2019, apparently at Anthony's home. Now, the reason I bring that up is that January 23rd, 2019 is an important date. Shortly thereafter that, on the 6th of February, less than a month later, approximately, I'd say two weeks, Rollo sent this email to Anthony Johnson and to Richard Cooper. Now, I'm not going to read the entire email, and I'm definitely not going to read the part where he whines about me and he gets angry about MGTOW because apparently Rolo's not capable of building bridges. He wants to keep the different tribes of the Manosphere apart. However, here's the part that I think that is extremely important, and I'm going to go ahead and read this because I think that it really gives us an insight into the mind of Rolo Tomasi. Number three, Rich doesn't trust Anthony. Anthony thinks Rich has overreacted. The end result is that this leaves RMG in a bad spot. My first impulse is to disband RMG entirely, delete the channel, and just deal with the fallout from the subscribers and the MGTOWs, who were only too eager to claim it a victory. Okay, well, first and foremost, um, wow. <laughs> you want to talk about narcissism? Rolo thinks he's going to disband RMG at this point, when the reality is, is that Anthony owns a third, Rich at this point owned a third, and he owned a third. So he thinks he's going to disband the channel and by himself, as though his third voting membership somehow gives him um, some kind of power. It doesn't, because he'd have to either have Anthony or Rich be a part of it. And at this point, it appears as though both were truly vested in keeping with RMG, despite some of the stuff that had happened. Um, in other words, DDJ, TFM, MGTOWs, incels get what they wanted, they win. I even wrote that in my notes while the two of you were bickering. DDJ wins. Well, again, frankly, TFM doesn't give a shit about the RMG. He never did. And TFM's and my disagreement, we've both moved on from that, and we're both doing our own thing. MGTOW, they're going their own way. Incels, I don't give a shit what incels do. You know, it is what it is. But we're moving on. Uh, I don't want to do that. RMG has a lot of value, and a lot of people are in limbo about this thing because they care about it. I've spoken with Ryan, Donovan, Carl, and Hunter in private about a way forward. Hunter in particular needs to know what's going on because he's got the Patriarch Show to host, as well as being a featured speaker at the 21 Con in May. This shit reflects on him and his reputation as much as us. I don't have the liquid assets to buy out both of your interests in RMG, certainly not at forty dollars to $50,000 that Anthony was suggesting. Ryan, Donovan, and Carl really want to keep this thing going, as do I, so I'm going to suggest the following. All right, let, let's stop here. This is virtue signaling, and I don't understand why Rollo is so narcissistic that he thinks he can speak for anybody. Ryan, Donovan, Carl, and Hunter 
apparently they're all red pill content creators, which means that, well, I don't think that their dick is in a purse and I don't think that their spine is on layaway. If they have any concerns, they can approach Rich and Anthony and Rolo together. Rolo doesn't have to do any backdoor dealing with these people. And the fact that he's even trying to set these people up for a split by trying to pretend that Rolo, Donovan, Carl, and Hunter are, are basically promoting this split, that's just unethical. It's unethical even if they agreed to do so, because again, he's going behind the backs of Rich Cooper and he's going behind the backs of Anthony Johnson. Again, his business partners. I want you to remember that. Okay, That's the kind of ethics that you're dealing with. A guy who's going to go and do backdoor dealings, not just with feminists from the New York Times, but he's going to do backdoor dealings with other red-pilled people to, drive, to try to drive a wedge through relationships within the red pill community. Okay, Rolo acts as though he's, he's an educator and he acts as though he wants to bring people together in public. That's a ruse. You can see right here from this email that he contacted Ryan, Donovan, Carl, Hunter, and probably other people in private to drive a wedge in their relationship between Anthony and them, and probably even Rich at some level as well. Now, we're going to move on. He wants them both to sign over interests in Red Man Group to allow me to run the show as I see fit, and according to what our regular panel members decide to do with it. Red Man Group becomes a separate entity apart from 21 Convention Studios with the option to do live shows from the conventions if this is what the panel agrees to. Although I will have primary control of the Red Man Group, it will be treated as a co-op between myself, Ryan, Donovan, Hunter, and Carl. I know I read that in the wrong order, but get over it. Um, so basically, he's saying that he's going to completely control Red Man Group. So if Red Man Group doesn't want to do 21 Conventions or Studios, assuming that, um, gosh, the, the Rich and Anthony just give him the Red Man Group like it's some sort of fucking left-wing welfare. You know, like, feel sorry for Rolo. Rolo's pathetic. Give him Red Man Group for free because Rolo doesn't want to pay for it. That just sounds like welfare. Is that, what is that? Is that like uh, old person red pill reparations? I mean, what, what are we talking here? You know, does, uh, does you know, the fraud father, is he trying to, to, to game Rich and, and Anthony to say, look, I know you guys are working hard here, but Give me this shit for free because my name's Rollo and my narcissism requires it. I mean, what the fuck's going on here? All right. Now we're going to continue on. Uh, it also separates RMG as a show being primarily about intersexual dynamics from any 21 conventions that Anthony may want to focus on strictly political themes in the coming two to three years. Well, you know what? Here's the thing, Rollo. Feminism is not only intersexual dynamics, but it is also political in nature. Feminism is an absolutely an ideology. And opposition of feminism cannot just be from man-to-man -man personal decision-making alone. There has to be political opposition because feminists lobby for legal changes in the law. They, they lobby the courts. They control the courts. So there has to be political themes if we are going to support men and stop the discrimination ag against men. We have to. There has to be some politics there. The fact that, that you're so limp-wristed that you can't handle the political piece tells everybody just how committed you are to the men in the manosphere, which, which we're going about to find out later is not at all. Now, we're going to move on. Uh, I, this is Rolo, will assume primary scheduling and topic creation for the channel. Okay, again, that's his narcissism. I want complete control. Give me control. And in this entire email, there's no money. Now, I would scroll down to the bottom where it says respectfully, but Rolo doxes himself, so I'm not going to dox him. Now, the other thing about this is, is that this is a chat group from Twitter that Rolo and his inner circle belong to called Rolo and Friends. And Anthony has a large number of posts from this secret group, which, by the way, uh, Rolo's OPSEC is lacking. All right. So Rolo says, uh, I told Pat I was going to call it with Anthony after October anyway. So in other words, Rolo was already planning on backing away from the 21 convention. He just wasn't going to speak there anymore. What it sounds like what he wanted to do is he wanted to do a hostile takeover of the Red Man group 
and then quit the 21 convention once he stole Anthony and Rich's platform from them. Then he goes on to state, I definitely want to do a new show with you guys. So yes, just consider us planning a new gig. We discussed this when Rich left, and I think I fucked up by not just cutting ties with Anthony then. So in other words, Rolo is planning this. And again, Rich left right around the time um, this email came out. And again, this email was uh, February 6th, uh, 2019. So probably, what, February, March, something like that. So he actually was talking right here. He admits that he and his inner circle were having these conversations about how to split, how to take over the Red Man group, and kind of do their own thing. That's a problem. That's a problem, and it is a completely unethical. This is backdoor dealing. This is feminine behavior. This is not the behavior of a Red Pill man. Now, we're moving forward. He also states, Red Pill 101 is still going to be a show for sure. We can also bring Red Line under my roof or Donovan's with no problem. I just got off the phone with Pat, and we're cool. I actually felt worse about how I handled last Friday's caller than this shit. Well, yeah, because, you know, Rolo's a narcissist. He has no empathy for anybody. He just cosplays that shit. That's why you don't ever see him host his own shows very often. Or if he does, he's always got other people, unless he does kind of like expose sort of stuff that's like pre-canned speeches and that sort of thing. Now, they've created a new show. Uh, it, here it is. Um, it's, you know, Cuck Zero for Successful Female Strategies or something like that. I don't know. Maybe I read that wrong, but I think it's pretty close to what it was. Um, you know, and then there's a new show announcement. Now, here's the thing that's interesting. We're going to kind of switch gears a little bit. All right. This is Ryan Stone, and he says, uh, sweet, Rolo, if you don't have time for branding, let me know. I'll pick up the torch, and that's what happened. You know, Cuck Zero uh, for Successful Females, that ran on Ryan Stone's channel right here, all right? So then he states, uh, I'm going to out and out an email about refunds and ask Anthony if he has any plans for that, and probably take Rich's advice on parameters, <laughs> okay? Uh, let's, let's talk about the implications of that for just a second. But we're going to share some more facts before we dive into that. Here's another thing. This is from a forum, and I think I'll post the link of this. If I can find the link, I'll post the link for this forum. This is Ryan Stone again uh, at Iron Eyes. This would be a good time to give an example of how to properly discontinue a business arrangement. If anyone was fraudulently given the impression that Rolo Tomasi would be a keynote speaker, it would be best to first contact the organizer and then escalate to payment processors, if not resolved to one's satisfaction. This is Ryan Stone following through on this, where he's trying to push for refunds for the 21 convention. That's what they're talking about, okay? Now, this is Ryan Stone's email that he was talking about. This is like his email newsletter he does uh, for retards, or I don't know what the R stands for, but that's my guess. So here we go. So, and then of course, you know, there's the modest picture of them on, this, on the stage, uh, you know, and he talks about Rolo and the 21 convention. We're going to kind of skip down a little bit here. It says, send an email, this is number one, right here. Send an email to tickets at 21convention.com or contact at Beach Muscles directly about a refund. I have his affiliate payouts in my Stripe account. I assume being a businessman, he will reimburse you. And I'm ready and waiting for him to request the affiliate payments refunded on my end. Okay. So Ryan knows that there are no refunds for the 21 convention. And he's telling his entire email list to ask for a refund. That's bad faith. It is, well, we're going to go into what it is in a minute. Because Rolo did the same thing. Rolo, on June 2nd, talked about a you know, 21 convention dates cancellation. And he says, quote, This is a very unfortunate turn of events, since it means I will not be attending the Poland convention or the Orlando event. If you purchase the ticket through my affiliate link and you no longer wish to attend, you'll have to contact Anthony Johnson for a refund. All right? Now, he knows there's no refunds. The other thing is this. This Rolo and friends looks like that Ryan Stone was coordinating with Rolo himself and at least Rich Cooper and probably other people. This looks like he followed through on that coordination and started executing on it. Not only did he send an email to his people about this, but Rolo sent it to his, I think it's like a half a million uh, subscribers or unique visits to his blog every month? Well, there's a definition for this. It's called tortious interference, also known as intentional interference with contractual relations. In the common law of torts, it occurs when one person 
intentionally damages someone else's contractual or business relationship with a third party causing economic harm. So let me give you an example. So you have some piece of shit who goes and tells people who purchase 21 convention tickets, you need to ask for a refund because Rolo's no longer speaking and I'm no longer speaking. So therefore, you've been defrauded. Okay, that's the narrative that they're going with. That's what they've said. So that's tortious interference. They could be sued for that. Their marital communities can be held legally liable for that. So again, according to Cornell, at common law, a defendant is liable to pay damages in tort for actions intended to interfere with the plaintiff's contractual relations with a third party. In an intentional interference claim, the burden is on the plaintiff to prove the elements of the claim rather than the defendant to prove that its acts were justified. To prevail on the claim, the plaintiff must prove four elements. One, that a valid contract existed. Well, guess what, boys and girls? I did the homework. Verbal contracts in the state of Florida are valid. Lots of case law. Number two, that the defendant had knowledge of the contract. Well, at all times, Rich Cooper, Ryan Stone, and Rolo Tomasi had knowledge of the verbal contract. They were speakers at the event, and they were affiliates selling tickets. Number three, the defendant acted intentionally and improperly, which they did. They told people to start getting refunds and falsely claimed that there was a fraud being taken place because they were no longer speaking at the event. And number four, that the plaintiff was injured by the defendant's actions. Well, I can tell you this. I have seen many of the attempted chargebacks and many of the people who were requesting chargebacks have quoted Rollo and Rich and have said that both have attempted to request chargebacks. And that's the reason they're doing it. It's because Rollo and Rich told them to. Guess what? That's intentional inference with a contractual relationship. Oh, and here's a handy piece of case law. United Truck Leasing Corp versus Geltman from 1990. Now, everybody's been asking me, well, why would Rollo do this? Why, why would he do this? There's, there's no motive here, DDJ. Why would he do this? Rollo, he, he's our, he's our Jesus. He's our Jesus Christ. He's the guy who jumps the fence to get to the promised land and mow our lawns. He's, he's the promised one. What's going on there, brah? All right. Well, let me burst your bubble here, ladies. This is a text from Rollo Tomasi. Quote, Imagine how much money I could make if I said fuck it and threw the red pill and the whole manosphere under the bus. I could just unblock Nellie Bowles and play her like a fiddle, giving her confirmation of every ugly suspicion the mainstream media ever wanted to write about the red pill. We could do a major investigative documentary on the ugly misogynistic underbelly of the Nazis ethno-nationalists in the red pill and broadcast it on CNN. Then he goes on and he says, then I could completely renounce all things red pill and join forces with the likes of Dr. Babe Love and talk about how awesome women are, how misunderstood they are, and how to end to push for purple pill mutual understanding while spouting off some earthy woo-woo mysticism because it feels good and it builds my brand in positivity. And all these fuckwits would believe it. Now, you want to talk about motive? It's no more complex than greed. Period. That's always what it's been about. It's about Rolo building his brand. It's about Rolo being in control. He wanted to take control and have 100% of control of the Red Man group. And he tried to force Rich and Anthony out for nothing. You know, he wanted, I don't know, uh, old person grandpa reparations for being the grandfather or the fraud father or whatever of the manosphere. And then the entire time, he was working to backstab them. So let me reiterate. As you can see, Rolo, after less than two months of officially going into business with both Anthony Johnson and Rich Cooper, attempted a hostile takeover. He tried to force out both Anthony and Rich Cooper. While Rich eventually sold his interest in the Redman Group LLC to Anthony Johnson, he made Anthony Johnson the majority shareholder. This is not what Rollo wanted. Rollo wanted exclusive control. His email that I showed in this video even admits it. Also, don't forget, Rollo admitted an email to working behind the scenes 
to persuade at least four other people close to Anthony to abandon him and to follow Rollo's lead instead. And two of them did, Carl and Ryan Stone. Even worse, Rollo, Ryan, and others in the Tomasi and Friends inner circle conspired to commit tortious interference against 21 Convention and Anthony Johnson by telling 21 Convention ticket holders to ask for refunds, even though at all times they knew or should have known that there are no refunds for Convention tickets. Not only does this put Tomasi and his marital community at risk for legal liability, but also puts Ryan Stone, Rich Cooper, and anyone else in the Tomasi and Friends inner circle and their marital communities, if any, in legal jeopardy also. Rollo acts like a nice guy in public, but it's all just an act. As you can see, behind the scenes, Rollo is a two-faced, greedy backstabber willing to sell out the entire manosphere just to make a buck. So let's recap for the back of the class. In part one, I exposed Rollo's long-standing secret backdoor relationship with a feminist New York Times reporter, Nellie Bowles. I also showed emails where Nellie Bowles herself admitted she only found out about the cigar bar because Rollo personally invited her to it, not because of any social media posts by anybody else. Then, I showed how less than a month after Rollo officially joined the Red Man Group LLC as a partner, he attempted a hostile takeover. I also showed that while this was happening, Rollo was secretly working behind the scenes to get everyone associated with Anthony Johnson and the Red Man Group LLC to abandon those business relationships in favor of working with Rollo himself. If you check Ryan Stone's channel, you will see many former Red Man Group members now working with Rollo in his Cuck Zero show, which confirms the messages I reviewed in this video. Then I showed that Rollo, Rich Cooper, Ryan Stone, and others conspired to tortiously interfere with the 21 convention, defamed both the convention and Anthony Johnson personally, as well as contacted their fan bases in a wrongful effort to persuade them to request a refund of their tickets. Finally, I showed Rollo's willingness to sell out the entire manosphere just to make a buck. Anyone who still thinks Rollo is an ally to the manosphere or Red Pill Truth is deeply mistaken. Rollo and his allies are enemies of red pilled men everywhere. Red pilled men do not backstab one another. That's a bitch move. Rollo and his friends are jealous of Anthony and everything he's built, and their gestalt feminine jealousy is driving their unethical conduct. And now the world can see these feminine backstabbers for who they really are. Were I Anthony Johnson, I would sue every one of these bitches into the Stone Ages for their feminist conspiracy to take down Anthony Johnson, the Red Man Group LLC, and the 21 Convention. And then I would salt the earth around them and make sure everyone knows that this is what happens to backstabbing betrayers of masculine men. As masculine men committed to red pill truths, we have enemies throughout the mainstream media and left-wing social justice groups. And now, just like APOC from The Matrix, we now realize we have enemies in our midst. Betrayers amongst us. The problem, which I've discussed before, is the red pill blind spot. We think that just because someone claims they're red pilled, that we take them at their word. We shouldn't. We should trust, but verify. Always. I'm DDJ, and this ongoing expose of the fraud father of the Manosphere is your dose of misandry today.